sorry. Okay, so uh, this is my second talk uh, at this conference. Uh, once again, thanks for inviting. It's a really great pleasure mm -hmm. to meet all the Joomla community. I understood what means Joomla family here. It's it's really awesome. And this uh, this is a con uh, continuation of my previous talk. It's a uh, more in-depth, uh, more detailed talk about testing. Uh, so, uh, I am uh, from Kiev, uh, from Ukraine. Uh, well, last time I had the slide that we have very interesting life there. We have fire festivals, uh, we have uh, lots of patterns in this center, but now life in Ukraine becomes more boring, despite the conflicts and the eastern borders. Uh, but still, it's still interesting, it's still really good and cheap country. Uh, one bottle of beer is half of euro. So if you, <laughs> if you need a good place to uh, have your time with uh, not my, much money, Ukraine <laughs> is a good uh, place to, uh, to do have it. And uh, I will be talking about, uh, I'll start talking with best practices for testing. Uh, it's um, uh, what makes a good test. Uh, ideally, it is uh, just a combination of these three steps. At first, we uh, set up the environment. We say, uh, what do we need exactly for this for this test? Then we tell what are we doing in this test, the, our specific action, and what we expect to achieve in the end. And this is how any test should be modeled. If you have multiple steps, so after one action I have assertion and then I have action again, it's it's not a good idea. So tests should be uh, uh, focused on some uh, one precise thing. And uh, uh, from my experience, I got these uh, best practices and on how uh, should you manage those unit in integration tests. Uh, first of all, it's not a good idea to put too much into this test. So. Uh, you just think, uh, does it fit in the, into these all three steps? If not, it should move to out the steps. So configuration is not a part of the test. Uh, it's a pretty bit, bad idea to use hierarchy. I will show you an example, you will understand what do I mean. And uh, separate test code from support code. If you need to prepare or set up uh, some additional services or um, do something uh, not, not related to actual tests, you should move it into separate code as well. And uh, what we are trying to achieve is make the test simple and verbose. So for anyone could read it, uh, for anyone could fix it, because it uh, often happens that one developer very passionate about testing starts to write this unit and integration test on project. And then other developers uh, come in and they, they don't understand what uh, why you, what are these tests, why they are failing, and how to fix them. And uh, probably they should be trained, probably that uh, these developers should be uh, should write these uh, tests more in more ver verbose manner, so anyone on the project can understand and fix them. Uh, so here's some examples about what I was saying. It's uh, from PHP in this case. So, uh, this is from a, re, from a real project. In setup method, they do a database connection and the database credential are hard-coded. That shouldn't be done this way. In PHP test, uh, PHP unit, it probably should be done with test listener. So it could be easily configured that this database should be connected because depending on the environment, you may change these credentials and you should not uh, replace it in all the tests, right? And uh, uh, the second thing is about uh, abstract class. Uh, so, uh, as I said, uh, it's a bad idea to uh, extend test cases. So we have PHP in framework test case and better not to extend it, uh, it with some uh, uh, limited test case because uh, probably we will uh, need uh, to add more actions into it. Uh, so if we have web test case and db test case and we can't extend them both, yes? So actually the PHP unit came to the same idea and now there is no DB test case, they have DB, uh, 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 DB test case uh, class for, for database interactions. They removed remo it into a trade. So you can easily uh, add the trades for all the um, 
testing method you need. So you add the DB test case, web test case, maybe some other things uh, with the traits. Uh, it's uh, to make uh, tests more variables, more easier to understand, it's a really good idea to create your own assertions. So I'm not sure what happens in this assert criteria translation, but I can understand uh, what uh, it is trying to test. And uh, this is uh, from the Propel uh, framework, Propel ORM code, and it's really simple. Four lines of code, easy to understand, really variables. And uh, this is uh, refactored code from Falcon framework. Uh, they uh, asked me to, to look into it. And actually, it's wow, well, guys, you're doing too much job. It's, it's could be really simplified. It's two line, one line of code. Why do you do so much? And you know, it's two, you know, two variables, <laughs> I would say. So if you can simplify things, do that, please. And uh, because the uh, test is not something that will uh, will work for forever. So code changes, specification changes, and the more easier you can delete tests, add new tests, uh, uh, the, the, that will make the project go faster. And for some uh, conception, uh, best practices I would recommend is uh, just to follow this uh, principle, so move out everything that is not related to tests. Login is not something that is uh, necessary here, so we are just pointing that we need to login here, but we are not describing how we are logging. Yeah. Uh, we uh, need uh, editing post, but we are not describing in a test how it is it happens. So we are injecting uh, it as a page object. We are moving this logic into page object, and then we just validating the assertion part is done here. So it's a condition I have in repository. It's action, edit post, and assertion. It's pretty verbose, I, I think. So. Um, there are some uh, things that are really, really hard to test, and there is no silver bullet for it. It's asynchronous things. So it's related to job queries. It's related to external APIs. Oh, external APIs is a key problem. But it's, they're still maybe asynchronous. And the most uh, hard thing in the world probably is JavaScript, yeah? So with current today's application, you are not sure when the page is completely rendered when it is really done. And uh, as browsers run the JavaScript, and it's too much JavaScript today, everything is becoming asynchronous. In there is really much problems of testing uh, this in real world. So if you don't come up with a good solution, it's, it's OK. No one, no one does. Sure. And uh, the third uh, uh, thing is uh, testing with real da data. So it's good if you have uh, some you are mm, not specified to test mm, data. Yes, you are specified. You think you, you need to test your code. But if uh, code relates to data, data, so it's geolocation, some, something uh, uh, code related to geolocation, and it's <coughs> 20 gigabytes of data which are really important, and, they're really, and you, your code depends on the data. It's really hard to do the testing and to ensure this that your code uh, doesn't broke this data you need. And no good solution for that as well. So you need to think each time you are doing this. Uh, it's uh, uh, not commonly mentioned, but uh, I should point this uh, uh, that uh, the most important tests is the tests that came from a real false. So when the site failed, our user discovered there is a bug on the site, it's really important to write down a test that uh, ensures that this scenario won't happen again. And from this, uh, the site uh, lifetime, the, you will have more and more and more of such regression tests. And they are real, real gem of uh, your belt of stability, actually. Uh, so they are most important because they are uh, real life scenarios. You could discover them in themselves. Your users did it for you. So if you if you have fault, okay, just fix it. Uh, but be assured that it will never happen again. Uh, it's a uh, coming to testing. It's uh, only uh, it's often conf confused testing and TDD. TDD is a password. Everyone 
knows it, but no one uses it actually. And, uh, but everyone is forced to use it. Uh, so TDD is test-driven development. And it's, uh, it, it, it's a long time ago, it's, uh, it came up and it's still on market, it's still a very popular uh, term and uh, actually it's, uh, when people say TDD, they often mean testing, but it's actually not. TDD is about development methodology. So the idea is that you write test at first, then you write the code that implements it, and you, you are making it, you are refactoring it, and in the end you, are, you have uh, uh, the code re written uh, and covered with, fully covered with tests. So with, uh, you need to follow the, this schema. This uh, gives you su such benefits, as I said, uh, you are developing with tests. Uh, everything is tested, yes? And uh, DDD forces you to drive a good design. Uh, so you, if you don't know this, uh, how to test this stuff, you won't try it. Yes. <coughs> so it forces you to think better on the design, on the dependency injection, on how to write the uh, code uh, following the solid principles. And uh, there is a tool in PHP that helps uh, actually do it. And uh, it's uh, not about testing, it's about development, yes, and designing. And uh, what's more important, it's a good uh, uh, learning uh, tool. So if you don't know how to write good code in PHP, and if you don't know, uh, you just started to learn the de dependency injection principle and others, uh, PHP spec just uh, uh, hits you by hand when you're trying to do something wrong, when you're trying to use globals, when you're trying to use static methods. It says, no, you should uh, uh, do the PHP code in its uh, current uh, modern way. And yes, it, you will need to follow the same uh, circle uh, to write the failing test, to write the code, and to refactor them to make them uh, good. So if you are interested in writing better code, just check there are lots of screencasts on Laracast, for example, about TDD, about TDD process, and how you will benefit from it. Uh, but contrary, there's still a big discussion, should everyone use TDD or not? Because TDD fans say that your code isn't good if you are not following it by TDD. And the guy here, it's David Henry Mark Hansen, he started the discussion that no, TDD is, that just doesn't work. And uh, he uh, came back and Martin Fowler had a great discussion sessions about is TDD dead, dead or not? Will, does it fit for everyone or not? And actually the point of David is that TDD drives you a good design, but is it design and optional? Uh, optional? And uh, it's uh, actually not. You can, uh, you can uh, provide a better solution without TDD. And that's, uh, so it contradicts with the idea of TDD, so no one will create design for you. Yes, so you can, you should think about it more, and this won't drive you to the best design. Uh, but uh, you should be a smart person to do that. And so, in the end, uh, there are more, lots of arguments into that side and into that side. So it's a good discussion. So no one uh, forces you to follow or not to follow TDD. It's a your choice, but uh, it's not just a your choice, but a choice of your team. If uh, you are the only person on the project who follows the TDD principle or writes code with the test, uh, with test uh, starting with test, that won't work actually. Uh, all the team should be aware of TDD process, why uh, is it, uh, will it, work, it works for you, and uh, you all should write the test in a similar manner. Uh, it's actually TDD is fun, because it's, it uh, shifts your mind how you think, how you develop. And uh, next buzzword is BDD, Behavior Driven Development. And uh, it, it's really, um, it really, <coughs> really forces just the same way as TDD, so everyone should do BDD stuff because um, this will make you, your code better, probably. And you should write uh, the specification in feature files. <coughs> and uh, despite all the buzz uh, about BDD, 
it's uh, it have uh, one goal. Is uh, this goal is not about testing or it's not about development. It's about communication. So the uh, one idea of BDD is uh, to provide a communication between management, uh, development, and tests. So uh, in, uh, user stories are written in that form format. So uh, they are called as serious managers, developers, and testers. And they are coming uh, into the bar, oh no, into the office, and they start to discuss in the next feature. And actually, uh, finally, they come up with the uh, feature specification written in such format. Uh, so it's, uh, as you see, it's plain English, with just formatting capabilities, some of them. And it uh, describes the feature by a real example. That's what cool about it. So manager can understand it. Developer understands that it's not some abstract thing. Not something like I need to add a country. <coughs> How to implement that? No one knows. But this describes that uh, 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 you need add Scotland is a province of United Kingdom and it should be there. So it describes in a very precise manner. And in the end, uh, this uh, scenario can be executed as a test. So test is only final action of, of, of it. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, I would say uh, some conclusion about TDD and BDD. So TDD is not about testing. It's about how you design, how you do development. And uh, uh, BDD is not about the development at, uh, at all. So it's, uh, your development team can start using BDD. So it should be a matter of all the team, uh, of its management, uh, should be a QA, should be involved, everyone should be involved in BDD. In this case, you are doing BDD the right way. If not, it's not a BDD, it's probably you are doing testing. And yes, testing is not equal to TDD and is not equal to BDD. It's a part of the process. Uh, so uh, one thing which is um, not said in when you st start doing testing is how would you do, sh what sh should you do with data? Because one test can create some uh, data on the site, the second she deletes this data, and there is no consistency in it. And uh, yeah, from, from this theory, it's really simple. You install PHP unit, you do all the stuff, but how should we manage the data? And uh, actually, the tests should be isolated. And they, so they somehow need to not interact with each other, and this data shouldn't be shouldn't correlate. Uh, what can we do is uh, to create and delete the data. So we creating it in, in setup, we are deleting in in at the end. Uh, probably this this works good, but uh, too much uh, boilerplate actions on each test. So this this approach has its drawbacks, but it it works. Uh, this is simplest, but the most slow approach is to recreate all the database between tests. So we have a SQL dump. We are just deleting database at the end of a test, creating new database. Probably this, uh, uh, in a manner of speed, this can be there are some hook that is to optim optimize it. Um, maybe to use Docker container for data storage or. Uh, have uh, in memory database. So it can be optimized, it can be fast, but it requires uh, DevOps uh, skills to do that. And uh, the third uh, one is uh, good for acceptance tests, uh, probably where you don't have any, an access to database. So it's, uh, it's sometimes it happens that when you're testing external site, you don't know about its uh, data storage. So in this case, you should uh, create non-intersecting data and uh, be ensured that these data are really unique for this test. And this works too. Uh, so uh, <coughs> test data can be managed uh, with fixtures. Uh, this uh, some some kind of standard solution where, where you prepare records uh, in database just for the matter of testing. Uh, you can uh, prepare these records as SQL dumps. So you, you prepare this in PHP Manager, create a SQL dump, and and this dump will be always loaded. And the most pragmatic, most uh, promising solution is to use factories. Factories is a 
uh, uh, picture generators. So you are describing the rules how the records in database should be generated. So for instance, we have a message. It uh, should be stored in table messages, and we de define the rules uh, how, how should we uh, generate them, so with a fake library. So it's, uh, then it's easy to say in, uh, in tests, so uh, I need three messages records. Then I go to page messages, and I see three messages in table. Wow. Good, and after, uh, in the end of the test, uh, these messages are deleted uh, using the vector map. So, uh, once again, it's this library is called vector mapping. Actually, it, uh, you probably need to des uh, design it for your database to implement it, because right now it's, it works only for eloquent database of Laravel and for doctrine. I did this patch, so it could work for, for doctrine as well. But uh, for your custom databases, may also work. You will need just some hooks in it. Anyway, this is the most clean approach I know for now. So, because you are not writing this data by yourself, you are generating it. It's cool. So, uh, going further to testing, we need to understand that testing is not just about code. It's about tools you you are using. Uh, one of the interesting tools I know is PHP VCR. As I said, there is a problem with, with testing remote stuff, so <coughs> remote uh, APIs uh, like uh, maybe <coughs> PayPal, Twitter, anything. So anything that is remote and you can't hit uh, their APIs every time you run tests. You will be probably blocked and you will have failing tests. Uh, you can't uh, do testing with, uh, uh, say, they don't allow you tests on their servers. And PHP VCR is actually simple but cool library. You are executing, the, doing the requests once, then PHP VCR re records them as on a tape, yes, and replace it every time uh, the tests are executed next time. Uh, so it's really simple. And so all API, API responses you, you had, they are written, and they are replayed uh, every time you need them. Really simple and cool, so you should try it. Uh, so they allow API tests to be uh, done locally. So you can probably uh, test the checkout process with payment on uh, locally, and you are ensured that one is that uh, the PayPal is connected. Uh, so next thing is how do we test emails? I mean real emails, and uh, I. I've heard of approaching which like open a tab in the browser, go to Gmail and mm -hmm. the credentials and see it this email arrived. And yes, but <laughs> it's, it's it's too complicated. Um, the most uh, pragmatic way to do it is to install some SMTP server and the finest uh, one I saw is mail catcher. So mail catcher uh, catches all emails that are sent it stores uh, locally and provides a web and REST interface for testing. So you should use it for uh, local development. It's just a web interface for not sending real emails to uh, people that don't need them. And uh, it provides a REST API so we could use it in, in tests. So in tests we can access this uh, server and check if an email arrived. It's uh, really important for such things like for both passport for functionality, which are hard to test in other way, and so on. So it's must have uh, It's a Ruby application, but there is implementation in Go and probably in other language because this approach is quite popular. And uh, uh, yeah, as I said, it's, it mocks SMTP. So. Uh, for web application testing, uh, we need lots of tools. Uh, if we are doing uh, Selenium tests, we need Selenium server, we need browsers, and uh, if you are lazy enough, we are doing it with, with PhantomJS, because PhantomJS is uh, just the same uh, Chromium browser, but uh, packet with, without, a, without a window, without uh, interface, without anything. So it's, it's browser, but in console. And lots of people do use it because it's simpler to set up, so uh, you don't need a real browser for it. 
Uh, but the most simple, most lazy approach is not to use browser at all, but to emulate your actions with, uh, with HTTP requests. So it's done in conception with uh, PHP browser model. So if your site don't have JavaScript too much, if everything uh, is run, run on server, this approach will, will fit with you. But if you need to take more attention to testing on UI side, uh, if you have JavaScript, and, and you need to test it in real browser. So this thing won't test your UI, that's bad. And uh, so uh, what's uh, bad about Selenium? So you need real browser. And how can we set up real browser if we don't have real window management environment? So I, I understand how to run Firefox on my laptop, yes, but I don't understand how to write, uh, to execute it on uh, shared hosting. How, how can it be done or how can it be done in, in other virtual environment? For this, uh, we have a, a virtual frame buffer that should be installed and uh, this uh, will allow Firefox to be executed. So it's executed, but uh, uh, you won't see it. And then uh, Firefox and Chrome browsers should use it. And it's pretty complicated to set up, especially on continuous integration server. So I recommend to use a Docker for that. And not only me, it's actually uh, recommended from the Paul Roach from Selenium. Uh, well, he was about Docker. So Docker is a, con uh, a platform for creating uh, containers. Uh, so uh, who, who heard about Docker? Okay, who understands what is it? <laughs> wow. So I just yeah, you can skip this slide and move uh, forward. Great. Uh, so with Docker running the Selenium uh, is, is really good. Simple. So you just uh, load the containers with everything installs, with browser installed, with Selenium server installed, with everything, and you just run. And you have real browser on your anywhere, yes, anywhere on any Linux host. You have real browser, so it's easy to run them on CI. But uh, Docker is not only for uh, for this. Docker can be used for anything related to testing. Why? Because uh, Docker. Um, gives us isolation, isolation for free. So we know the test should be isolated and Docker does that. And uh, also it does uh, uh, the great stuff about that uh, uh, it doesn't save the intermediate results. So if you know Docker, so in the end of a con container execution, uh, image won't be changed. So we can run it again and again and again and the test, tests won't affect the original image and that's great. And that's why uh, I and not only me recommend using Docker for parallel testing. So uh, it's actually uh, you know, the matter of when does te uh, when test starting to uh, run slowly. Probably unit testing are not slow. Functional, uh, they are not so slow also. And we, we are coming to test running slow only in acceptance tests where we do interact with real browser, real web server, and real database. And in this case, uh, we can't uh, solve this issue just with uh, moving uh, database to shared memory or something else. So there is no uh, solution based on code. We need to this solution in infrastructure. And yes, Docker is a good thing about it. So, uh, uh, we need to parallelize our tests, yes, and uh, we need to separate this uh, to run them in parallel, and we need to isolate them. Uh, actually, once I tried to do this manually, so if I have mm, uh, tests that are running in 20 minutes and I want to have them run in five, I am splitting them, them in groups and running them on uh, four different databases with four, four different web servers. And uh, actually, it, it may work, but the more services you add into the stack, if uh, I will add memcached, if I add Redis, I will have to manage them manually as well. And it's really, it's, it becomes an MS, because the tests are not so stable. And 
In Docker, they, these processes are completely isolated. I can uh, just set up with one credentials all the databases I'm using, and they will work. Uh, so um, the approach I'm using currently now is uh, that I pack all the application inside one container. So application with web server, with, uh, uh, with database, everything packed inside one container. Uh, the tests are executed inside it, and in the app, the container stops and reverts to the original and its, its state. And uh, we are using Jenkins and Jenkins Matrix plugin to, write, uh, to execute concurrent builds. So uh, the test script, uh, as you know, Docker uh, doesn't allow you to run more than one processes inside container, but you can have background processes. So this is the initial script we are using in, inside the container. At first, we are starting services. Elasticsearch, Nginx, PHP, PM, MySQL, FontainJS, everything we need is started inside one container. And after that, we are receiving uh, external parameters about which application is, is tested and which su test suite is executed. So we split uh, application in, uh, this was for one uh, test, we split it into eight, yes, yes, into, uh, into eight uh, processes and they executed in parallel manner. And what, what is good also about it is that uh, you will see which exact part of application failed. Was it uh, backend? Was it frontend? Was it uh, API of acceptance? Uh, and so, so on. So this is um, breaking this test into processes works really good. And it's really easy to execute them as well. So you just provide, provide the suit and you see, you, uh, you are configuring it with the models. Uh, that's how it works in Jenkins and probably the setup can be uh, done in other CIs. I'm sure it can, but this is just to bring you idea. So you <coughs> just need a Docker container, fast enough server to run all these containers in parallel and you uh, collect the results in the end. Uh, so uh, testing is much harder than you think. So it's not just about testing your code. It's, ch it's more about inf building a proper infrastructure to do that. So uh, many developers do pay too much attention to unit tests. And they say that if you can't write unit tests, we, we, uh, you have a bad code. But actually, you can, you can write tests on, at any level you need. But in this case, you will need to pay more attention to infrastructure, to know how to clean up database, to know how to connect to observer. And this uh, setup should be easy to reproduce uh, uh, for other developers on CI system and so on. Uh, so when you get to the point where tests are running more than five minutes, and probably this will be a setup test, you will need set, uh, setup for realizing uh, this. And the Docker is the most effective solution on the market to do the exist parallelization. So, thank you. <laughs> I think we discussed the Docker in the, my previous se session, so maybe we can continue. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday we, we were trying to set up uh, on GitLab CI the Joomla test with Docker, but we didn't succeed, yes. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, it's because it was GitLab CI, I'm not familiar with it. And it because the connection is really, it's really slow, I tried to install one Docker image and uh, it took about 15 minutes for me to do this, so I dropped this idea, so mm -hmm. not today actually. Because uh, what is cool about Docker is that uh, actually a dream of uh, young web developers uh, that you can build a website locally and copy it to host, which is just becoming true with it. So you don't have a needed deployment process actually. So you can build a Joomla site locally, copy it to server, and it just works. And it's, it's awesome. And, uh, but it, uh, it really makes uh, this containers to be very in really large size. Uh, so, okay, about best testing practices, about tools, infrastructure, questions.
very comprehensive. So, yeah, no need for questions. <laughs>